Hi, my name is Trey Mayfield, and today we're going to go over some of the basic setup procedures for this WEG CFW11 VFD. From the factory, this drive gives you six digital inputs, two analog inputs, two analog outputs, and three relay outputs. As you can see here, the keypad is a standard three-line liquid crystal display. All the units that for each line you can see is programmable from the factory. It shows you speed, current, and frequency. It also has a real-time clock, which is very helpful for fault monitoring and stuff like that. For this, just the most basic of setups, I've hooked up a speed pot from my speed reference, as you can see here, and also given myself a, a switch for a start-stop. Now that's the manual, the user's guide shows you exactly how to hook that up. Now from the factory, this drive actually comes from power up on local mode, meaning if I change my switch status or anything, it's not going to make any difference. Because in local mode, you have the ability to control it locally through the keypad here. As you can see, I'm just going to hit the start button, and our drive takes off. I can control the, the speed via the keys on the keypad. Now the local remote uh, key is how you get it into remote mode. And now, as you can see, I'm in remote mode. Now that is a programmable change as to what mode you want it to be in, and we'll talk about that a little later on. So now that I'm from in remote mode, I'm going to use my switch to start the drive. And as you can see, my speed pot, as I turn it, it controls the speed. It's following me perfectly. Now to go over a little more of an advanced uh, parameter feature, I connected another switch to digital input 4. So we're going to go over how to change that. Now this CFW11 give is very easy to change parameters. You go through the menu and you can look at every one of the parameters but also separates the parameters in groups which makes it very easy depending on what you're doing. So I'm going to go to parameter groups and hit select and what I'm looking for is the digital input group. Which is group 40. So I'm going to select the digital inputs group and then scroll down until I get to DI4 which is currently not used. Now one thing that you should always know about the CFW11 is it comes from the factory password protected. So if I try to change this to something, as you can see, it gives me an invalid password. So you always need to change that. And the password is parameter uh, quad zero. And from the factory, it's always five. So if you enter five, it will now allow you to change whatever you want, depending on your needs. But now we've set the password. I'm going to go back to digital inputs digital input 4 and let's make it jog so I scroll up until we get to jog and hit save now this is saved and we can hit the return button to get back to the main screen and when I make my switch you can see we're in jog mode at 150 rpm which is jog speed now, I'll just go over one more thing. Let's say, for example, which is most of the cases, that you don't want it to come up in local mode upon power up, which is how it is from the factory. You want it to either come up in remote mode and stay there, or come up in remote mode and be able to be changed via digital input or the local remote key. So, if we want to change it to be in remote mode from power up, uh, there's several ways to do it. The easiest way, I think, is to go to the parameter groups. Now, in this case, you know, parameter group 32 would make sense, remote command. And that first parameter is 220, and that's local remote selection. So from the factory, this makes basically means that it starts in local mode, and the local remote key on the keypad is what selects it. So what we want to do is I'm going to change it to local remote key remote. So it means it's going to power it up in remote, but you could also 
change it back to local via the keypad. Now there's several other options that you can always have it in the remote, always have it in local, or use digital inputs. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. So that parameter is set now. Now one more important thing I'd like to show you is how to back up your parameters. So you actually you have, after you have everything set correctly, um, it's a good idea to save it to the keypad so that if you ever need to change something or you lose your parameter set for some reason you can always download it back. And it's very easy to do. If you look at backup parameters, that's one of the parameter sets there. And if you go to copy function HMI, WEG refers to the keypad as the HMI human machine interface. So in this case we're going to take it from the VFD to the HMI so we're taking the parameters from the drive to the keypad and then we hit save. As you can see it's copying all the parameters from this drive and making a copy of it on the keypad. This is very useful if you have several drives that are set up the exact same way. You get one going and take the keypad to the next one, download it on, and so forth. As you can see it takes a little while to do the copy. When we're finished with that, you should see it go back to the main screen, say it's done. The very last thing I want to show you is very helpful for um, troubleshooting. If you go to the menu, one of the subgroups shows changed parameters. Now I've changed several of the parameters just to, for an example here, but this shows you every parameter that's been changed from factory, which is extremely helpful in troubleshooting especially if you've changed one thing and now all of a sudden it doesn't work and on and on.